Hello, my name's Rasheen and I'm sick of reading. Hello friends and welcome to my first ever writing vlog. I've been trying to use this quarantine time while I'm furloughed and off work to focus on my writing and luckily it coincided with escape rule which means that there has been a whole writing exercise for this month that I have been able to sink my teeth into. I thought that this would be a good time to film a relaxed cosy little writing vlog. Uh, I've been watching some of them on YouTube and I find them really soothing and also inspiring so I thought maybe I would add my voice. Uh, if you don't know I have a master's in creative and life writing um, which I graduated from in 2018 and I write poetry mostly at the moment. I do have an idea for a novel as well but it's kind of still ruminating so we're working on poetry. So the two things that I am writing for at the moment are Escape Rule which I mentioned already. That is a month-long writing event hosted on Instagram by Savannah Brown who on the Instagram page Let's Escape Rule where there are where there is a prompt for every day of the month. You write a poem every day and you post it on Instagram and you read everyone else's poems and comment and makes a nice little community and also a nice little exercise. Um, and the other thing that I'm writing poetry for is that there are two local poetry competitions who have their uh, end date on the 1st of May, oh no on the 30th of April, who have their end date on the 30th of April and I would like to enter both of them. So I'm writing a new poem every day or almost every day I think I'm about five days behind so I still have some poems to catch up with I'm trying to write as many new poems as possible and I'm also revising some of my older poems in order to enter them into this competition so the first thing I do is that I write a new poem and then I do some revision and then I maybe come back and write a second new poem in order to try and catch up on some of the poems that I've missed uh, Escape Rule is kind of a bit more like a writing exercise than like writing poetry the way that I would write it in order to enter competitions or to try and get it published or for my MA it's a lot more relaxed because the turnaround time so quick so I'm writing it and posting it the same day um, I'm not giving it the same editorial process and um, it's more of an exercise in order to um, like flex those muscles and to get my mind back into a good process into a good poetry space because since about October last year I haven't really been writing as much as I would like to be so uh, it's a good way to get yourself into that headspace and also to stop worrying so much because um, it's such a quick turnaround you're getting it up every day they're not going to be perfect great poems but you do have some gems in there which is also nice. This is my poetry notebook from my masters um, and it is one of the only notebooks that I have ever completed like all the way to the end there is it's completely full but it also has some of the exercises used in my master's program so the way that I tend to write poetry for Escape Rule is that I begin kind of I look at the prompt I think there's a lot of um staring into the middle distance in writing poetry um, and I see what inspires me and sometimes I can write the poem completely organically or sometimes I can begin the poem organically go away for a while and then come back to it and finish it that way um, but if I'm struggling to write it organically or I'm not liking anything that I'm coming up with then I can turn to some of the exercises in my poetry journal or sometimes what I do is I see what I've got already and I see if it is seems to be leaning towards any sort of form if there's any sort of form that I can think that would be a good way to express the ideas that I am trying to express um, because sometimes having those parameters those the strictness of something like a villanelle or a sonnet or even just a rhyme scheme can really help to boost your creativity giving your creativity a little boundary can sort of you can flourish within there whereas when you have too much space you can sometimes like wilt because you don't know quite where you're going with anything and there's too much space so I quite like to work with form sometimes um, so let me show you around my setup. So I am at my dining room table in my conservatory and I have, this is my notebook that I'm going to use to write in. This is my poetry journal um, and I also have my iPad. So I write in anything really. Um, I write longhand, I write type on my phone, I type on a laptop or on my iPad. Um, however, my uh, iPad keyboard is broken and because of the whole situation I don't really want to order a new one because I know a lot of warehouses aren't letting their people socially distance as someone at risk I don't want loads of parcels coming into my house so um, I'm just dealing with that and I don't really like typing on the touch screen on my iPad the same way that I don't mind doing it on my phone so this is mostly here because it has all of my poetry on that I need to revise and also because I can put some nice <laughs> ambient sounds on or some um, like lo-fi beats um, or just a, an ASMR room um, and I have my 
headphones as well because um, I don't have a speaker so it doesn't sound so great coming out of my iPad um, and of course I have my tea essential writing juice but yeah, I'm gonna get on with it now and I will um, talk you through stuff talk you through what I'm thinking show you any exercises that I do maybe I'll put an exercise in that might be of interest to some of you if you want to try writing your own poems let me know um, and I maybe I'll do this again with talking you through some exercises so the escape prompt I'm working on today is bearing fruit and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to write in my notebook a list of ideas images things that pop to my mind when I hear the phrase bearing fruit and then sort of images off of those images if there's any references that I feel like would fit in that poem any um, images that particularly feel uh, very visceral and strong and any sort of themes or emotions that come to mind that I would like to write about. I've gone for a spring tea room ambience room. all my ideas of bearing fruit and then as you might have noticed I started to use my iPad um, so I had an idea but bearing fruit thinking about fruit I write a lot about Greek myths bachelor's degrees in classics uh, and bearing fruit and fruit made me think of um, Baroque paintings but also paintings of Greek characters uh, Greek gods and so of course the two gods that I most at least I most so closely associate with uh, fruit is Dionysus and Persephone. Persephone with pomegranates and Dionysus with grapes. Um, so I just had a bit of a look up of Dionysus, if it would spark any ideas for me about what I would like to write about him. And apparently there's a story where Dionysus was the daughter, was the son of Persephone, which I've not heard before. He's always been the daughter of Semele, the son of Semele, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Semele, but apparently he also could be this, the son of Zeus and Demeter, Zeus and Persephone, Amon and Amalthea. So there's always lots of stories with Greeks because there are different cults from different parts of Greece or different parts of the Greek Empire. So different stories get told um, and different gods get absorbed into different uh, histories. So a god that was from somewhere in Persia becomes Dionysus when the Greeks tell the story. Anyway, Dionys the other thing that I thought when I heard bearing fruit was of fecundity or fertility and Dionysus is also the god of fertility. So I thought that that would be a good thing to work in. So I think this is going to be quite a dark poem like a baroque picture kind of dark not like emo but um sort of a very visual uh bacchic like obviously Dionysus Bacchus similar same person um yeah so I that's the idea that I've had so far so now I'm just going to kind of kind of try and organically work with that see where I come to and I'll get back to you in a bit I've had a visit from a friend <laughs> oh, he's off. So, this is my notes that I've taken for my poem. Just ideas and bits of information in my horrible handwriting. I have truly horrible handwriting. 
But now I'm just going to sort of sit and think. As I said before, a lot of poetry writing is just sort of staring into the middle distance or closing your eyes or staring at a blank page and tapping a pen. It's my plan for the next half an hour and hopefully the poem will be written by then. Um, at least the first draft. But uh, because it's an escapable poem, I don't tend to do more than one draft. It's just sort of a first draft kind of thing. And then I'll show you how I redraft older poems. poem hasn't written it, hasn't been written uh, quite as I would like it to have, but that's okay. Sometimes they come easily and sometimes they don't, but they, I do tend to finish them. So I'm going to give myself a break because that usually helps to like just clear my mind. Um, so I'll have some breakfast and bake a cake because I feel like baking a cake. And I will come back again when I'm uh, editing some of my older poems and if I actually finish that poem so and talk to you about all of that. And I finished my poem and I posted it now um, so I will insert a bit of it and me reading it here. I come bearing fruit, spread tables with it, laden them till their knees buckle, adorn them with the grapes I wear as a mascot, brush my thumbs over their velvet skin, pinch them for plumpness and fill cups with their thick red liquor for staining lips. Did you see that I brought figs? Cup them pertly in your palm and part the purple flesh. Let the heady syrup sticky your fingers. It is sweeter when sucked from skin. Tastes of day drinking, summer, and the wasps. And the peaches are downy and dampen sourly the tablecloth hour by hour. Please take one gently between your teeth while they are still sweet. See where pomegranate arils glisten like dewdrops, like seed pearls hand sewn, split like jewels in your mouth. I come bearing fruit. Hello. So um, I tried to stay in the conservatory, but after a certain time of day, it gets really, really hot down there. And uh, it's hard to focus or concentrate on anything when you're just sweltering. Um, and if you open the door, all the ki kids who are home from school are being extra noisy. So I came up here because it's cooler and also I'm a cosy person and I like to be cosy. <laughs> so I work from my bed office. This isn't my actual bed, uh, this is our spare room. So I kind of still feel like I'm separating work and bed. I'm in a bed, but I'm not in the bed I sleep in. So does that make a difference? <laughs> um, Anyway, now I'm going to get on with editing some of my poems. So I'm probably going to make a start and then I will show you through some of what I do. This poem here I put on, um, on Google Drive and my friend Maz, who's also a poet, commented some stuff so that I could get some feedback from someone else. And so I am just taking their comments and putting them on this app. Now this app is called Liquid Text and it's great because you can just add comments like this. I know you can do it in Word and stuff as well, but I don't know, I like the way Liquid Text works. Um, if you pay for it you can like draw on it and stuff but I actually don't find that that useful I prefer having things typed out basically I'm going to add their comments and then I'm going to read it myself and add my own comments um, and then I will get back to you and tell you what the next step is Okay, so this is actually a different poem that the same person gave me comments on. Um, I will link them in the description. They're an excellent poet if you want to go check them out. Anyway, so I've put their comments in on this poem as well. And um, now I'm going to read through it and put my own comments on. What I do now is I'm going to put my own comments on. And then I kind of, because it's editing, when, I, uh, when I'm putting it down on the page, it's more the whole picture. Um, this one, I feel like the whole picture is fine. The other one that I was putting comments on earlier, I read through and I feel like I don't like it. So I feel like I'm going to have to rework the story again and 
do it in a different way maybe taking some of the lines and some of the ideas from that poem but i think it's gonna have to be a whole new poem rather than just um a line by line edit whereas this is a line by line edit where i just go in and i will change lines that feel unnecessary lines that feel um like they're not within the same tone of the poem uh extending bits of it so this poem is kind of about atalanta uh, atalanta was the fastest runner in greece basically and no one could beat her she didn't want to get married but her father said she had to get married and she said she would marry the man who beat her in a foot race but whoever lost if you if they entered the foot race and lost then they lost their lives so she was just <laughs> loads of men were losing their lives because they were like i can beat her but none of them could until i can't remember exactly his name anyway he tricks her by throwing golden apples and she gets distracted by the golden apples and he eventually wins and then they get married and then they end up accidentally having sex in a temple to aphrodite and she turns them both into lions because the greeks thought that lions couldn't mate with each other like they thought that lions were all men and leopards were the ladies so that's why she turned them into lions obviously we know that wouldn't have stopped them but um so this poem is kind of a romantic marriage scene into a sex scene into a turning into lions scene um so I, but the comments that i've got are that um bits of it seem a little clunky or the images need work um but that especially i haven't focused enough on the sex into lion scene it's very much romantic and then the end is much more rushed whereas that is like the crux of the poem so i need to go back in and focus on that and give it some more <sighs> sexiness which i guess isn't my strong suit so I'm going to be trying to work on that. So liquid text here is just for adding comments and information. I have to go on to into pages or Microsoft or whatever to actually make the edit. Whenever I'm checking my poem to see how much I like it, I have to read it out loud. If I'm reading anyone else's poetry, I also have to read it out loud. I feel like poetry, their rhythm, the um, sounds of the words, reading it in my head, I find it really hard to capture those things, the rhythm, the sounds, the sibilances, the resonances, everything it's such a um musical form that i feel like has to be spoken so i can't read poetry on the train or else i'm giving everyone a performance that still feels a little clumsy at the end um I, i've just added some ideas and thoughts some images so i'm gonna need to keep working on that but there's not much else to show you really while i work on that like just be watching me typing and untyping and going like and saying things aloud over and over um so that is going to be the end of my vlog I showed you how i draft and how i edit um if there's anything else you would like to know let me know in the comments maybe i'll make another writing vlog in the future i'm not really sure how they're supposed to go i've been watching some but a lot of them just seem like daily vlogs where they show clips of them writing and talk about what they're working on so i don't really know what else to add but um hopefully you enjoyed this and it was uh, in, an insight into my process thank you for watching and if you like this please give it a like and subscribe to my channel i would really appreciate that and i will see you again the day after tomorrow bye, -bye.